Hello, my name is Danny the Guide and are you ready for your London snippet of history? Today we're going to discover more about the London Underground and why was it needed in the first place? Let's start at the beginning. In the year 1801, the National Census was done and it estimated that living in London, there was a million people. Now, just to you, so you understand how compact London became over the 19th century, by the end of the 1800s, it had estimated that there was now at least seven to nine million people living in London. They were living in cramped conditions on top of each other, families in one room, and people would commute to work by walking. They had no other train, railway system to do this. So you can imagine these areas where you had really lots of families living together, these became known as slums, where you were living in squalid conditions, disease was rife, death was prevalent. And in the 1830s and the 1840s, you had the railway boom in Northern England spreading down to London. And people saw this as an opportunity that they think, oh, these people can move outside of London and now commute in. So you had the railway station of King's Cross St Pancras open in 1852 and in 1854 you saw Paddington station open. These were mainline overground railway stations that brought tons of coal and wool and people into London. But the people then couldn't commute onwards. Their only options were the buses, horses, by foot, and congestion in inner city London was getting out of control. Charles Pearson put forward a campaign for an underground railway system because you couldn't go overground, there was no space. You couldn't go outwards, again, there was no space and that defeated commuting into the city. You couldn't go up, the only way, was down. So in 1863, London's first tube line network opened and the tunnels were dug by a cut and cover method, which essentially means destroying roads, streets, houses in order to dig trenches, cover them over with the brick, the tunnel, and then you'd fill it in with the soil. This was great. I mean, the Metropolitan off was flying. You had it going seven stations in total, from Paddington to King's Cross to Farringdon in the city of London. They were using steam trains because that was the norm of the time, but that didn't stop the fact that you still had steam trains running in an underground shaft, in a tunnel. And so if you go to Linster Gardens, number 23 and 24 are fake because what they did is they created a fake facade of the building and behind that you get an opening in the space of the underground so the sh smoke can come out and then that carries on into the underground system. The next step was to go even deeper underground. No one liked the cut and cover method because it was expensive and destroyed lively streets, homes, etc. So James Henry Greathead in 1890 created the Tunnel Shield. This was whereby you created, you dug underground and his shield enabled workers' safety from collapsing soil, from floods, etc. And he opened the City and South London Railway Line, which was London's first deep level underground system and the shape that it made created a tube, which is how we recognize the tube trains today. It also was the first to use electric traction to control the train, so we weren't using steam anymore. And each tube line today, there are 11 tube lines, each one uses a different version of the standard tube stock. If you go to the London Transport Museum, you've got a beautiful variation throughout the history. But the most recognisable today is most likely the 2009 stock that is often used on the night tube, 
which opened in 2016 on five of the main lines. Thanks to James Henry Greathead and thanks to Charles Pearson, London has a major tube network running underground. But did you know only 45% of the tube system is actually underground? And it's thanks to a gentleman called Harry Beck that we are actually able to read where the tube lines go because the map that we know that looks like an electric circuit board was designed by Henry Beck in the early, in the 1930s. The most famous symbol of the London Underground is the roundel. That beautiful round circle with a line going through it that says underground, letting you know that you can go underground. And the gentleman to design it was the managing director of the London Underground and the first chief executive of London Transport in the 1920s, Frank Pick. And that symbol is internationally recognized now. In fact, he passed away in 1941. And on his 75th anniversary of his death, Piccadilly Circus unveiled an art memorial tribute to him using that beautiful roundel with his name running through the middle in the font that he had picked out himself. So there you have it, a snippet on the London Underground about why it was created, how it has come to exist and now how much it expanded. To find out more about London Underground, head over to the London Transport Museum website where they have exhibitions galore about the evolution of the underground and what came before and what's coming next. If you liked the video, please don't forget to subscribe to my channel where you can find other videos about London snippets of history. Um, and I hope to see you in London soon for an actual private tour or a public tour, which I shall be running as soon as lockdown lifts.